two, three, four. Hallelujah. We are live. Welcome, everybody. What a way to start. Well, it's Ascension Day today. And uh, remember the day that Jesus ascended into heaven. It was the end of his earthly ministry and uh, the beginning and the resumption of his heavenly ministry, which continues to today. And uh, we don't know Christ after the flesh. We know um, the, the Christ, the risen, the glorified, the ascended Christ, the Christ of the Spirit. And that's how we relate to him. And... Um, you know, Thomas wanted to see Jesus and he didn't believe that he was alive and, and uh, basically wouldn't believe until he put his hands in the nail marks, in the piercing mark. And uh, when he did, you know, Jesus entertained that and, uh, you know, just in his kindness and in his grace. And, uh, and when he said, I believe, you know, Jesus said to him, you believe now that you've seen, blessed, more blessed are those who've never seen and they believe. And so we're more blessed than the disciples. And uh, so what a day. Um, I was at a, a steel place today, just buying some nuts and bolts and washers. And, and uh, one of the guys helping me with a piece of steel that was cut, um, you know, he came up to the counter and he was speaking to the lady before she took my card. And he said, you know, it's such a shame that all the Christian holidays basically have been taken off the calendar. So it's there, but it's not 
a, um, a, a day off anymore. You know, it's not a public holiday, but that's okay because we can still celebrate. And uh, we've got Jonathan Pfeiffer with us and Johan van Rensburg, two beautiful brothers in Christ. Amen. And uh, yeah, and put up your love poster. That's great. We're going to just remember we're going to just remember the ascension of Jesus. And so it was at the end of his 40 days of appearing and uh, teaching the disciples on things of the kingdom. He was redressing some wrong understanding because they were waiting for some kind of a liberator. You know, the Messiah was to come and release them from Roman oppression. But yeah, they missed it. He came to release us from the burden of sin and the uh, oppression of the devil and so what a redeemer what a savior we have so welcome everybody i'm so glad that you've joined us there's many of you that uh, know jonathan and i'm sure that you would have uh, tuned in uh, because jonathan is uh, here with us and so you're welcome and those that uh, are tuning in because they know johan van rensburg i see taryn has already tuned in welcome taryn from rensburg it's okay. good to have you with us and then, of course, all of ACF uh, family and friends, and uh, we're excited about tonight. And um, just know that uh, his presence is going to fill your room. That's the beauty of the Christ. He's no longer limited. He's now unlimited. Amen. He's no longer just Amen. present. He's omnipresent. He's no longer absent. He's present. And so, um, so welcome. And the nice thing about lockdown you can join us for praise and worship and you can still have your tea and your coffee. When we start a church, you won't be able to do that in the service. So I'm glad that you're joining us, hopefully at the end of a day's work and you're kicking back and relaxing. Why don't we just enjoy the presence of God? Let's just, let's just commit this time to the Lord. Let's just pray. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for all those that are joining us right now. And even for those who will watch it after the fact that when it's not live, Lord, I want to thank you that you said that you would be not only in us, but with us by your Spirit. And um, that's the beauty of the Holy Spirit. The world cannot receive him, but we have received him because we know him. And Lord, we want to thank you that as now both Lord and Christ, at your ascension, you poured out the Holy Spirit. And he's in us, he's with us. Lord Jesus, come and walk among us. Be in that lounge, be in that home. Be present with everyone that's viewing. Lord, whether they're in, a, in their offices, no matter what they're doing, families or individuals sitting alone, Lord Jesus, would you just walk in by your presence? Bless us with your presence. At your right hand, Lord, there is pleasures forevermore. Lord, with you is the fountain of life, and we need you, and we need your presence. So we welcome you all, and we welcome especially the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Johan, Lead us in worship. Thank you, about fifty. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Ooh, ooh. I see the Lord and his eyes all flame like fire. I see the Lord and his hair is white like snow. I see the Lord. I am 
angels cry Holy, holy is the Lord This way I sing, I cry, Lord, and I cry Holy, holy is the Lord oh, We lift our voices now and we cry
presence we come not by any works that we have done oh but by grace and by your grace alone into Thy presence we come. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow, that was awesome. Into your presence we come. Not by any works we've done, but by your grace, Jesus. Wow. We serve a living, resurrected, wonderful Savior. You know, not only did he give proofs of his resurrection from the dead but um, he gave convincing proofs of his ascension because after he sent them out uh, to preach it says about the ascended christ 
He said, and the Lord worked with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. The, the layman at the gate, beautiful, Peter and John attributed directly to Jesus. They said it was, you know, it was by Jesus and by his name that this man stands before you well. And uh, wow, thank you, Johan. What a blessing. And um, just a couple of things on the um, ascension, and I touched on it on Sunday, of course, but why don't we read the account, um, you know, the actual event when Jesus gathered them on the Mount of Ascension, the Mount of Olives, and it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, they, they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Still thinking, you know, some kind of a physical, political order. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons or the times and dates the Father set by his own authority. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. In other words, basically what he was saying is if you want to know the kingdom of God, you need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit because he is the, the spirit of the kingdom and the kingdom comes with him. And so when you receive Jesus, the kingdom of God is not something external, but the kingdom of God is within you. And he said, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud, the cloud of witnesses hid him from their sight. And they were looking intently up to the sky as he was going. And suddenly two men, and we assume it's Moses and Elijah who had appeared with him on the transfiguration mount talking to him about his exodus, his exit. And uh, they stood dressed in white besides them they were part of that cloud and they said men of galilee why do you stand here looking into the sky or into heaven this same jesus who's been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go so we he will come back with the clouds he'll come back with a cloud of witnesses and he'll come back uh, to dwell and to be amongst his people and so it's really interesting that the apostles always preached the resurrection of Jesus and gave testimony to his resurrection. They were witnesses of his resurrection. But yet his ascension obviously is just as important. You know, every aspect of the life, the ministry of Jesus is absolutely important. His birth was important. Otherwise he wouldn't be here. And so you can't elevate one over the other. And um, each aspect is supernatural. Each aspect is um, a part of the whole story of redemption. And so if he hadn't been born, he could not have lived. And uh, if he had not have lived, he could not have been crucified. If he was not crucified, he could not have been resurrected. But he was. And he was resurrected from, from the grave. But, but that wasn't the end of his ministry. Even in John chapter 17, he prayed and he said, Lord, you know, um, that I might share the, the, the glory with you that I had once before. So, you know, the physical Jesus, we see him begin at Bethlehem and end on the Mount of Ascension, the Mount of Olives. But he lived prior to that. And of course, he lives on after that. And, and he's the ascended Christ with an ascension glorified body, which is um, the type of body that we will have. And so um, that is really, really amazing. But the whole New Testament is, is pregnant with the ascension of Jesus. Uh, it's quite amazing that um, in Hebrews chapters 1, um, verses 1 to 3, it says, In the past, God spoke to our forefathers, our ancestors, through the prophets in many and various ways. But in his last days, he's spoken to us, his son, the prophet that he raised up, the final prophet, and uh, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe or the worlds. This prophet, this son, is the radiance of God's glory. This makes him stand out from any other prophet before. And the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by the word of his power. And after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. He sat down after providing for purification of sins. So as the son, as the heir, now as the sovereign, he sits down as our redeemer. He's provided purification for sin. So that part 
of his redemptive work is now over. It's over. He sat down. It's finished. And he's seated in a place of ruling and reigning and sustaining all things by the word of his power. But the amazing thing is, when Stephen was being stoned in Acts chapter 7, verses 55 to 56, he has a vision of Jesus. And you know, it's good for us to have a vision of Jesus seated um, at the right hand of the Father, because you know we'll see just now in a couple of minutes that we're seated there with him. But when he was being stoned, it says, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see heaven open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. So powerful. You know, I, I, I often said this, immediately sat down, signifying the end of our salvation, having provided purification for sin. He stood up in his priestly role. He sat down as far as his ironic ministry was concerned in providing the sacrifice, but he stood as Melchizedek to administer the presence of God and to bring full salvation and to ever live to make intercession for us. Man, that is so powerful. You know, as far as Jesus is concerned, um, his exaltation to glory after his work was accomplished. And we'll look at a couple of verses now, but it was, you know, he was the son of God before his incarnation, before his birth, he was the son of God, the pre-existent word who was with God, who was God, who was there from the beginning. And then there was the glory of, you know, the God manifest in the flesh. And, and um, you know, that's John 1, 14. We beheld his glory and, uh, we, you know, he was full of grace and truth. But now as the exalted son of God, you know, he's, um, and after the resurrected, he's ascended and seated at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And that was so important. <clears throat> Because it was the completion of the earthly part of his ministry, but the beginning of the heavenly session, the heavenly uh, part of his ministry. And of course, that also is not permanent. It's temporary because in Acts chapter 1 and uh, verse, verses uh, 6 and 7 and 8 and down, you know, um, Moses and Elijah said, the same Jesus, the same way he left is coming back again. And uh, so there'll be a continuation after the heavenly session, and that is where he comes to live with us, um, you know, as, as the bride coming down out of heaven and, uh, you know, prepared. And, and he comes to, because the dwelling place of God is with men. That was what I was trying to say. So Acts chapter 2, verse 32, this is Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost, which we remember next Sunday. And he said, this Jesus, whom you crucified, hath God raised up, wherefore we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted. And here is Peter. And of course, they knew that he was at the right hand of God exalted now because of Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And so having received, Jesus now received the, uh, the promise from the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost. And Peter says, this which you see on the day of Pentecost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear with ears because they could hear them prophesying, praising God, speaking in tongues, you know, um, declaring the, the praises of God in their own language, totally miraculous communication. And uh, he said, for David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thy foes thy enemies, thy footstool. And of course, we know from 1 Corinthians 15, the last enemy still to be defeated is death. And one of these days, it'll be under his feet. So the ascension meant much to Jesus himself. And, um, you know, we need to look at the fact that it's all for us, but there was a lot for Jesus himself. And just, you know, a couple of little things that we need to take note of. And that was, was the proof of complete victory over sin and even over death. And we see in Revelations, he said, you know, I'm the Alpha Amiga, you know, I was dead and now I'm alive and I hold the keys of death and how I conquered death, the first man to conquer death. And of course, he's piloted the way. He's the forerunner gone before. And so we will overcome death as well. Of course, it's a position of honor. You know, he said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. That's a position of honor. He's the son of, you know, the, of the father's right hand, just like you know, um, uh, was it, um, you know, yeah, was it Isaac? Yeah, said about, <laughs> said about Benjamin, he's the son 
of my right hand. It's the place of honor. It's also the place of power. Uh, Paul said, uh, Peter said this, this Jesus whom you crucified, now God has made both Lord and Christ. So he's the king. He's the Lord. He's the sovereign. He's the heir of all things. He's in charge. God has given everything to him. He rules and reigns, but he's also the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. And he received of the father, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And he poured the Holy Spirit out and he's still pouring the Holy Spirit out today. He's still administering the Holy Spirit of God. It's a place of rest. Um, sorry, we saw in Habakkuk, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, after providing purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of majesty, of the majesty in heaven. So very much a seated place, a place of authority, a place of rest from where he rules and from where he reigns. And uh, also it's a place of extreme joy and extreme happiness. I love Psalm 16, verse 11, and we can... We can quote this just as Johann was leading us in, in worship. We can claim this for ourselves. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures evermore. And it says that we drink from the rivers of his pure delight. His presence, oh man, his presence is really awesome. And of course, Hebrews 1, 1 to 3 shows us it's a place of permanence. You know, Jesus will always be in that sense at the right hand of the majesty. And uh, Paul says in Philippians, you know, about Jesus, uh, Philippians 2 verse 6, who being in the very form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but uh, made himself of no reputation, took up upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Wherefore, or therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father and you know we co-died with him we were co-buried with him we were co-raised with him we co-joined with him we've been co-glorified with him we co-seated with him and we co-ruling and reigning with him. You know, so what is man that you are mindful of? Psalm 8, Hebrews 2, and we're in this position right now being raised up. And Paul tells us that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, and, uh, you know, it says, you hath he quickened who were dead in transgressions and sins. Man, we were in a state, you know, a sorry state. We were in a hell of a state, if I can say it that way quite crudely. He says, where in times past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And we had our conversation, our lifestyle in times past in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature objects of God's wrath, even as the Gentiles were. But, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love with thee, loved us. Even when we were dead in transgressions and sin, hath quickened us with Christ by grace you are saved. And he's raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Man, what, what powerful statements. And the, the whole thing about the ascension, you know, Jesus said rather shockingly, and I'm going to close with this in a couple of minutes, and, and Jonathan is just going to lead us for a while in, in praise and worship. You know, we, we serve a living, living, risen Savior. He's not only resurrected, he's ascended. He's glorified. He's seated at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. You know, he never abdicated um, responsibility to the world and to the planet. There's a certain amount that he left over to us, but there's a certain amount of control that he still has. And um, uh, Paul says it in Hebrews that he still sustains the whole universe by the word of his power. And he's not left us nor forsaken us. And the shock and the surprise when Jesus said to the disciples, it's for your own good that I go away. You know, it's for your benefit. And, you know, obviously they could not conceive of why it would be beneficial for Jesus to leave, to leave them and to go. But he said to them, I will not leave you as orphans. Oh, 
You know, that's so beautiful. And, um, you know, ACF and, and all those watching, you're not orphans. There's no room for an orphan spirit in the body of Christ. We're not orphaned. He didn't leave us as orphans. He gave us the spirit of adoption, the spirit of himself, the spirit of the son bearing witness in our spirits that we are children. We are sons of God. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. We were brought into a family with Jesus as our brother. And uh, he shares the inheritance out equally, equally with him. As we bore the image of the earthly, so we bear the image of the heavenly. And so it's so powerful. And so his, his um, ascension is, is not about his absence. His ascension is all about his presence. And part of what he's doing as our high priest who ever lives to make intercession for us, besides presenting um, himself to the Father, he speaks by what he is. He's also praying. He's also interceding for us. I tell you the day I realized that it blessed me so much. I mean, there are times when I don't know what to pray or how to pray. And yes, the spirit inside of me prays with groans and travail and intercession. Um, and, and, but, but Jesus is praying for us. And he demonstrated when he prayed for the disciples and when he said to Peter, Satan is, desire to sift you like me, but I have prayed for you. What a high priest we have who ever lives to make intercession for us. Man, he's praying for us. He's praying for us. He's praying. He's praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. And the beautiful thing about it is that he will quicken your spirit by the spirit, even to pray for yourself, but he will raise up others to pray for you as well. So much does he want to cover you with prayer. Such a good high priest. And the whole book of Hebrews talks about, talks about it. Hebrews 5, Hebrews 8, the point of what I'm saying, says Paul, is this, is that we have such a high priest, just like the Jews had, but even better, the power of indestructible life, um, the power of uh, complete holiness, never had to provide a sacrifice for sins for himself. And he, and he, 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 he prays, he lives to intercede for us. Man, he's praying for us. That is so glorious. It's not about his absence. It's about his presence. And, and the other thing is, it's not about his remoteness. It's about his nearness. You know, we often think about, you know, heaven is up there. Heaven is a long way off. Heaven is, a, is far away. But, but heaven is another dimension. You know, it's just like in the next room. There's just a very fine veil between between where we exist, where we live, and where he does. And, and in fact, the two are blended. And so it's just another dimension. And so, you know, it's not about his remoteness. It's about his nearness. And that's why he's Emmanuel. That's why he's God with us. That's why he's Al Shama. The Lord is there. Um, you know, everything about him uh, tells us that he'll presence himself with us. And in fact, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, he's not only among us when we get together corporately, but as individuals, he's inside of us. And I think I mentioned it on Sunday that when he was in Jerusalem, he couldn't be in Bethany. When he was in Bethany, he couldn't be in Bethpage. When he was uh, in Bethpage, he couldn't be down on the shores of Galilee. Now he can be everywhere. His ascension means he can be omnipresent. Before that, he was just present. And wherever physically he was located, you know, just those people were blessed. Now, everybody all the time can be blessed equally. And so we all have equal access to him. We have all um, have equal share of his presence. And the amazing thing is what makes him God is that he's fully with you. 100%. You don't just have his pinky or his ear, you know, and I've got, you know, a thumb or something like that. No, no, no. He's with you. All of him is with you present. All of him is with me present. So no longer limited, he's unlimited. And uh, the amazing thing is, he said to the disciples in John 14 verse 19, because I live, you live also. So what a glory we have, what a savior we have. I, I remember once and you know, we can, we can include this um, with his ascension. You know, what other God is with his people? You know, they build idols of, them, of the, you know, their gods but they can't speak. They can't answer. They're dumb. You know, they have to take food to them and sacrifice. But our God reigns. Our God lives. Our Jesus is, is alive forevermore. And he ever lives to intercede for us. And um, he's present with us. He's very much interested. Psalm 8, what is man that you are mindful of him. And so he's full of thoughts towards us. 
uh, it's just amazing. What a precious savior. I remember once we put on an exhibition at a, a trade fair when I was living in Zimbabwe and uh, the people of the Baha'i faith had attended and I was interested. So I walked in, I'd never heard of it before. And you know, they had a list like they all do, you know, of all the different prophets going all the way down from Abraham and Moses and, you know, all the way through. And, uh, you know, then they had Jesus and they had, you know, they had Muhammad, they had whatever. And now we were their leader of the Baha'i faith. Now he's the latest in the succession of prophets. And, and they didn't have priests, they had priestesses. And um, so, um, you know, this priestess was there. And I said, I, I don't understand this list. And she looked at me and she said, well, you see, you know, there was Abraham and there was Moses and, you know, that Confucius and they had, you know, others in there and they said, and then, and then, and Jesus, and then, and then, and now we have, you know, our leader who's the latest in the succession. I said, no, I still don't understand. And so she went again. So I said, no, I understand your list. I understand your list. I said, but you see this one here? And I put my finger on the name of Jesus on the board and I said, He's the only one who has risen from the dead. Not any one of these have ever risen from the dead. They're all dead. They all got graves. He's got an empty tomb. I don't know. He is the prophet then. And she looked at me and she said, um, could you just wait a minute? She went and called a higher <laughs> priestess. And the whole story started again. And I repeated it again. I said, I still don't understand. You see this one yet? Jesus. It's the only one that was risen from the dead. Well, you know what? He's the only one that has ascended to the right hand of the majesty. He's the only one that's ruling and reigning even now. He's the only one who will subject death under his feet. And because we are his body, death will come under our feet. And that time, you know, mortals shall put on immortality. Corrupt shall put on incorruption. Our souls will be saved. Our bodies will be saved. And he will make his appearance and come and dwell with us because he has made us to be kings and priests to rule and to reign forevermore. What a Jesus, what a savior. So we need to let our worship ascend and remember this important facet of his heavenly ministry and focus on that and closing, Jonathan's gonna take over. And uh, Paul said, um, he says, set your heart on things above, set your minds on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the majesty. Because what Paul wants us to understand is that is where we're seated. This Christ who is seated in the heavenly is, is our model. That's what we are like. And he says in Hebrews chapter two, we don't see everything yet subject to him, but now we see Jesus, you know, a um, little lower than the angels now raised above the angels. And, and that needs to be our contemplation because John says, as he is now, so are we in this world. And he says, for you died with Christ. And, and he said, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ, who is your life, when he appears, you will appear with him in glory, like Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. Come on, saints. We've got something to praise the Lord about. You know, we've got something to worship God about. Jonathan, are you going to lead us and take us further? Um, are you there, bud? Good. Bless you, Pastor. Thank you very much for that. Amen. Awesome. Bless us. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost his grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living. Oh, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost his grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living Oh. 
is freedom. Freedom reigns. Freedom reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace. Falling on every face. There is freedom. Thank you. 
for you are for us. How great is our God, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Let's cry out holy, holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, for you are holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. Thank you, Jonathan. Wow, awesome. Worthy is the Lamb. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Jonathan. That's really awesome. Just a very quick advertisement. Then I'm going to ask Johan to speak a one-minute blessing over you. Then Jonathan is going to pronounce a one-minute blessing over you as well. And then I'll close. But just to remind you, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, is our digital online prayer meeting. Quite a few people have signed up. JD will post it again, but if you go onto our ministry page, there's a link there. If you click on it, it'll take you to the WhatsApp group and you can join in. And then from seven o'clock to eight o'clock tomorrow night, we're going to have an hour of power prayer. And basically we're going to start of praying in the Holy Ghost because we're in that time now when Jesus ascended, he said, go wait in Jerusalem until you've received the promise of the Father. And uh, so there is a power in waiting and they were anticipating the glorious baptism in the Holy Spirit. So man, it's going to be good to be praying this week and anticipating Sunday, a day of Pentecost. And uh, I'm trusting God for something new and fresh and powerful by the Spirit for every single one of us. Just a fresh touch of God and a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Several times in the book of Acts, it, it uh, specifically mentions Peter amongst the group where, and it says, and they were all filled, and they were all filled, and they were all filled. And that's why Paul says in Ephesians 5 verse 18, we need to all be being continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. I like what they asked one of the great revivalists. They said to him, why do you need to be filled so often with the Holy Spirit? And he said, quite simple. He said, I leak. <laughs> and so I need to be filled constantly and continuously with the Holy Spirit. And I hope you leak 
You know, we need to leak on all of those around us. We need to leak the presence of God. We're the city on the set on the hill. We're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world. And we are the Christ on earth. And so when he sent it, he sent back the Christ portion. You know, so, so the Christ is on earth, the anointing. And so tomorrow night from 7 till 8, and it's a, a group that's only going for an hour. And they, you can't chit-chat and you're not going to get fuzzy bunnies and pulsing hearts and, you know, all these, you know, things. And it's not going to be another one of those groups. And so it's just open for that hour. And uh, so we'll be posting prayer requests. Next five minutes, we're going to pray for the president. Next five minutes, we're going to pray for the economy, and for, especially for businesses. Next five minutes, we're going to pray for. So go along there, sign up, pray with us tomorrow night, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock um, for the Hour of Power. And of course, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. And then next Sunday morning, uh, Pastor Gerrit and Lene Hrabler of Christ Life, we're going to be um, sharing uh, um, our feed straight onto their ministry page as well and they're going to be um, we're going to be having church together um, ACF Airport Christian Fellowship and Christ Life Ministry so that's going to be really awesome and uh, so we're just endeavoring to do whatever we can to reach you and to bless you so Johan thank you Jonathan thank you bless you that was awesome awesome worship man it's really it glorifies God and it edifies our souls so Johan just speak blessing over the viewers wow uh, first, Jonathan, thank you for that old song. Wow. Just wow. Thank yeah. you for, for the presence. And, you know, um, well, Pastor John was speaking as well and uh, talking about his Lord and that song, Emmanuel. Came up. And I just want to speak that word of Emmanuel over Amen. everyone, that God is with us. And as we just heard that, Something supernatural is about to take place, whether you're ready or not. Something supernatural out of the ordinary. I'm, my wife is going crazy here as well. And just to realize what God is doing and listening to the word, uh, we got to be excited and we got to be, we got to be filled up the whole time. So mm -hmm. I just released that, that presence over each and everyone listening mm -hmm. right now. And I released the power to be refilled i release the power yeah. to be filled up again and again and again and i release a spirit of hunger father yes. i release a spirit of hunger over the people that something supernatural is about to take place we all feel it we all know it but that we'll be ready and more than ready and more than willing to be there at the front and to to release it to the world because the world is waiting creation is waiting for the sons of god and i release that power to to manifest in jesus name father we are we are ready. We don't, we're not going to miss it. We're not going to miss anything that you want to give. And I just release that over each and everyone's lives, their minds, their spirits, Lord, to be one and to be in tune with what you want to do. And I just speak the word of peace and the word of blessings over each and everyone as they go and sleep or wherever they are in the world watching, Lord, that something supernatural happened today, tonight, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jonathan. Right, thank you, Pastor, and thank you, Johan, as well. And um, Father, we know that you are real, and we know that, you're, that your presence is real, Father. And this evening, I want to declare that your reality of who you are, that people would experience you in a fresh way, yes. that people would be ready, that we would be ready, Father, to, to be open to what you have to say and what you want to do in our lives. Father, I speak the greatest of blessing i speak the greatest of increase i speak the greatest of peace to people father in the name of jesus christ father we speak everything that you have for your people father in the name of jesus may we rise up father as your people father and stand for what you have placed in our hearts placed in our spirits may we father share the love of god with everybody around us everybody always father in the name of jesus christ we thank you father for acf and for pastor john and for and for your hand, Father, and for the church members and for families. And I want to pray for churches, Father, Father, also in this time, Father, that we would rise up, Father, that the call and the mandate that you have placed on our lives, Father, that we would speak up and share more, Father, and invite more and tell people about the goodness of God, Father. Amen. May we live that out. May we be surprised, Father, by, by the newness and the things that you have planned for your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen and amen and amen. Amen. And my prayer for you is that Apostle Paul said in, the, in Philippians, in Ephesians chapter 3, he said, For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom the whole family in heaven 
and on earth derives its name. And he said, and I pray that you may be strengthened with might, power in the inner man, that you may have power to grasp what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of God, which surpasses knowledge. And so I pray that, that God would strengthen you in the inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, because it's Christ in you which is the hope of glory. And that's the whole reason for his coming and his ascension and sending the spirit. Christ in you may be strengthened with might in the inner man. If you are sick in body and we're praying for a few people, we had a beautiful testimony from one of our leaders last night. The last Sunday before lockdown, a couple visited the church and he was suffering from um, regular seizures, several a day, epileptic fits and seizures. And uh, they were talking about... Um, you know, uh, you know, basically paying him off and uh, his wife had just lost her job. And so they were in dire consequences and a dire state. And um, so we gathered around them and prayed. Shireen prayed, JD prayed at the end, I prayed. And she messaged the other day to say, however many weeks it's been now, months. And she said her husband hasn't had one seizure um, this entire time. And we give glory to God for that. And so right now, I just want to speak health to your body as well as finances to your bank accounts, you know, as well as um, peace to your hearts and minds in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be strengthened in Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed. Join us tomorrow night, seven, otherwise Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Jonathan, bless you and your dear family. Really love you. Thank Appreciate you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jonathan. And you. Uh, I mean, uh, Johan to Taryn and the, the kids as well. Love you guys. So bless you. We'll see you soon.